Hey everybody, welcome back to my backyard on this beautiful Saskatchewan fall day where it is shorts today, freezing tonight, and bunny hug tomorrow. <laughs> anyway, today we're gonna be doing a concrete project. And as you can see, I've already got a bit of a head start. Now, the first thing I had to do was I obviously had to get the stairs out of my way, so I yanked them off and I set them to the side. Then I dug my patio stones up and repurposed them over in the other part of the yard because apparently we might be getting a third bin from the city, so needed room over there. Then I made my form. Now this is nothing more eh, than some two by fours that I cut and screwed together. The only thing I will say about this is make sure when you're doing it, the inside of your form is the size of the slab you wanna make, not the outside, remember that. I've seen that mistake made, it is way too easy to make. Then I just made some stakes out of some scrap one by two, but you could also just buy them in the store. I just had the leftover material. Now that you're all caught up, we can start squaring up our form where we want it and removing dirt until we got a bit of a hole. We want the form to kind of sit down in there. Now I want my form to be about three quarters of an inch to an inch above the ground. So I'm gonna dig this down. And the easiest way to do that Honestly, we're gonna take a spade and we're gonna mark out around our form. Then we're gonna take one of these square shovels. We're gonna hold it down level flat with the ground and just start scraping smooth until we've got it down as far as we want. Now all total, I ended up digging down and scraping out about two inches worth of material. And then I dug a trough around the entire outside. And this just allows the form to kind of sit down and get a little bit lower in relation to the ground where I wanted it to be. And it also gives you some wiggle room to kind of lift up and push down in certain areas to make sure that you can get the form level. Once I knew that the form could be made level, I went around and pounded in all my stakes into each corner and I fastened the stakes to the form with the screw leveling as I went. This just ensures that later on when you're pouring the concrete, you can't knock the form out of level. This is gonna be held into place. I also added one stake into the center on each side just to make sure that it didn't get pushed out with the weight of the concrete later on. Now we need a base for our concrete. I'm just gonna use this crushed natural rock here. I got this from a local landscape supply center. They charge two bucks a bucket. You bring your own, you fill them up, so it's pretty cheap. And we're just gonna rake in a thin layer over the entire bottom side of the form. You don't really need to build up a whole lot of thickness, just enough to cover the dirt and just ensure there's no lumps anywhere in the rock. Now for reinforcement, I just got this stuff right here. It's just a four by eight sheet of a wire mesh. Squares are about four by four. And you can find this in the hardware store, in the concrete aisle, in a lot of places. But if you can't find anything like this, you could use the wire mesh or just use rebar, whatever you got available. Just as long as there has to be some kind of reinforcement in here, don't skip it. But you want your reinforcement to be about an inch, inch and a half away from all the edges. And with this, we're just gonna lay it straight on the rocks. That's good enough for this. All right, now it's time for probably like the most fun, but also the most work part of any concrete job, and that's mixing the concrete. Now I've got this mixing tub here. Again, I got this in the concrete aisle. This is a two bag mixing tub. You're gonna wanna definitely start and mix one bag at a time. I usually mix my first bag pretty soupy just to make it easier to mix because once you add the second bag in, it's gonna absorb a lot of the water from the first one. Then you just kinda add water intermittently 
until you get it to a pancake batter, oatmeal batter type consistency somewhere in there. Before we add our concrete to the form, we're going to rinse the entire thing off. This washes all the dust off of the rocks and the wood and everything and helps the concrete stick to the rocks and kind of get down in there and bond to everything as well as help the form slip off later. Then we can just add the concrete to the form. Now normally I would suggest using a shovel, but my brother's like, <laughs> why don't we just dump the dump the bucket in there? So that's what we did. But I will stress though, it, it is heavy. Like it's 132 pounds of concrete. It's not light. So if you're not confident in it, don't do it. Just grab a shovel and just start scooping it out. That is the easiest and safest way to do it. After a few bags, the form is starting to get pretty full. Now we can start screeding everything off. So we're just going to use a straight 2x4 and go back and forth across the form in a saw-like motion. This will bring out the cream and knock down any high spots. You'll also go back and add some concrete and fill in any low spots as you go and then just keep working your way all the way to the end and screed it right off until everything is nice and flat. Okie dokie. It's been about 40 minutes now since we poured the slab. Now, most of the water has evaporated off of it now and it's just starting to firm up a little bit. And this is where we want to hit it and start finishing it out. So I've just got a steel trowel here and I've got a concrete edging tool. And we're just going to go around and hit the entire thing and start to prep it out. All right, now when you're edging this guy, your first pass, you're going to kind of want to just come and hug the board ever so slightly and just sort of cut a line. And once you've got it done, you see here, I'm going to pick up this leading edge and I'm going to push down ever so slightly with the back edge. And that's going to start to smooth this out and cut my line. Then I'm just going to rock it back and forth, go back the other way, rock it back the other way. Then just sort of trail the back end and lift off. And now this is just going to be a first pass. We'll come back and we'll do another pass here. Uh, probably about the hour and a half mark or so. And that'll be more of a refining pass. This is just sort of making sure that we have our line cut in. And we're just going to take our trowel and just blend it all in. Not pushing very hard at all, just sort of letting the weight of the trowel do the work. And don't worry at all if you have some lines. Those are going to come out in the next step. While I was waiting for the concrete to set up further, I had a little visitor come and join me. I was amazed Slade let him be. He didn't chase him off. <laughs> so anyway, we're at about the three hour mark now since we poured the slab. And now that the slab is firmed up quite a bit more, we're going to come back and repeat the same steps. But because it is firmer, this is going to be more of a refinement step. And you're going to notice it's going to come out a lot smoother. After letting the concrete set up a little bit more, we're at the five hour mark now. And this timing is going to change drastically depending on if you're pouring this in the middle of summer and it's hot out, or if you're using a high early bag mix of concrete that firms up a little bit faster, you may be doing this at around the three hour mark. But the way to test that is to come out and push your finger into the concrete lightly. If you don't leave a fingerprint, then you know you're at a good time to broom the entire finish. Now this is just a small little concrete broom, again, that I got in the concrete aisle, and I'm going to brush the entire finish. This adds a little bit of an anti-slip finish to it so it's not slick when it rains, but it also is a little bit aesthetic too. 
Now, if you do this too early, you will remove the cream layer. So make sure to kind of test it as you go and don't brush too hard because it is still soft. If you brush too hard, you will peel it up. But just brush the entire thing over and then let her sit. 24 hours total time and we can remove the form. Now the stakes, however, are a little trickier to get out of the ground, but a nice little tip, use the claw end of a hammer and smack them a few times. Eventually the claws will hook into the stake and you can pull them right out of the ground. All right, it's been a couple hours since we took the form off the slab and it has really started to dry out now. Now that the sides are allowed to breathe, really, really starting to mattify itself now in the finish. Now we need to think about curing it. A couple things, you can water cure the slab, so that's just literally taking with soft water, just lightly flowing out of your hose, flood the entire slab every six to eight hours or so for the next couple of days. That'll prevent any bad things happening from the concrete. The sealer, however, is gonna keep the top layer looking good for a long time. It protects the cream layer from cracking and peeling up, and it also protects it from staining and discoloration. I, however, have got this stuff here. It's made by Quickcrete. You can find it in the concrete aisle with everything else. It's a curing seal. We're just gonna apply it with a four inch little paint roller, and this will allow me to skip the watering step, and it's an acrylic sealer at the exact same time. So it's two in one step. Now we just gotta get it done. As you can see, the sealer goes quite a long way. And it goes pretty quick. Well, everybody, that is it. It is a nice, small, but simple concrete pad. Just anybody can pretty much make this. Just make sure you got a little bit of grunt and muscle to do it, or maybe a little electric cement mixer. The process is fairly simple, but it is a lot of work. So I hope you guys like that video. Oh, channel news. Uh, I'm gonna be working on my website here coming up. I'm also gonna be working on a merch store. So keep an eye out for those. And on the website, I'm also gonna be going back and making plans for a bunch of projects that I've already done. So those will slowly get uploaded to the website as well. And there's gonna be a bunch more stuff coming out. So this is gonna be happening over the next few months. So keep an eye out for that. Otherwise, I hope you guys like this one. And until next time, thanks for watching.